Hey, so we are back with uh, Curious Jay. Uh, we have more uh, stuff here where you took a trip yeah, uh, to yeah. New Orleans and you decided to do some tests. And we have a we have a couple photo albums here, so it's going to be like a two-part video. Uh, this album is called Curve. So explain uh, the experiment that you did when you took your trip to New Orleans. Yeah, so nothing, nothing new and groundbreaking here. I've seen lots of curvature tests when it comes to the flat earth, globe earth debate online but i just kind of it was one of those things where i just had to do it myself had to see for myself which we tell everybody we encourage everybody do your own experiments do your own don't don't yeah. take your word for it mine or anybody else's that's right and it was one of those deals where it's like just in case everyone else was doing something wrong so what i did was i went up to uh i was in new orleans i was on break from work and i went north of lake Ponch train to a town called slidell louisiana right I've been there and uh yeah <laughs> lucky you and uh i went down to the beach of the lake and I placed my camera on a tripod, and it was about 18 to 20 inches, about, about 19 inches above sea level, right? And I faced the camera southwest towards New Orleans and Metairie. And I have pointed it in the direction of where this building should be. And this is called the executive, uh, there's my let's, tripod. Let's, yeah, let's uh, back it up. This is the uh, Nikon P900, I believe. Correct. Correct. So that's the one that they shoot the moon with, and it's, they, they really can zoom in a, a great deal with yes. that. Yes, yes. Okay. Got a very powerful zoom on there. Now, I pointed in, in the direction of the Executive Tower 1, okay? Uh, this is the tallest building in Metairie, Louisiana, and it sits really, really close to the lake. Um, if you were to Google it, you know, it's it, it'll show you. It's right on the, on the beach of that lake. But pay attention here. The roof, the height of that building is 204 feet feet so keep that in mind all right so and just to show you the distance of where i was to that um you, you can go to this wow 24 miles yeah this is 24 miles from where i was standing to that building right and there are no other buildings in metairie that have the box on the top you know what i mean that that unique little box on the top it's a box and building this is with the a box tallest building so there's not a mistake that right you no, know there's no other buildings so um but what was really interesting is that I could actually see a little bitty, tiny little blip of, you know, where it was. You can't, obviously can't make out the shape with the naked eye, right? But I point the camera over there and, um, you know, lo and behold, let's see how much. Now, let me, before we show how much is I can see with the You're camera. You're going to make him wait. Make him wait for it. Wait for it. Right. So the curvature formula for the earth curvature is one thing about flat earth that I haven't found anybody contest it is legit and the way you do it is distance in miles squared times eight inches right so 24 miles um of distance right you basically just take your uh, your 24 miles and you multiply it times 24 and you come up with a very large number 576 times eight the inches and you get 4608 divide that by 12 to get your feet and you get 384, all right? So between those two spots, there should be 384 feet of drop in the earth, okay? That building is 204 feet. We're going to go feet. back to that, yeah, 204 that feet tall. Yeah, that building is 204 feet tall. So how much of it should I see? None of it, correct? It should be As far as the formula goes. Feet, that's yeah. right. According to the formula, it should be 180 feet below the horizon. So let's see how much we can see of it in the, uh, in the photos. And there it is. Boom. It almost looks like an oil rig. Yeah, that's right. That's what that's I right. thought it was when I first imported it into the uh, Photos app. Yeah, no, it's, uh, and there's no oil rigs currently on the Lake Punch. So how much is that, how much of that building is it? I mean, there shouldn't be any, but it looks like there's a great deal of that building. It's almost all of it. Because if you go back and look at the building and you compare the uh, the, the, the roof, you know, the, the roof represents a certain portion of the building. And it's, you know, it, you might be able to fit 12 of those roofs. So it's the, that down. little characteristic yeah. of that. Yeah. It's pretty so easy to see. I would say you see over half the building. So you got about the first hundred feet or so is blocked by the distortion. Yeah, it's a rough, the, it's a rough sea or a rough, yeah, you know, yeah. uh, body of water. So if it was, if it was calm you probably could see a little bit more. Yeah, of it. I, I took several pictures of this thing and you know, there it is again. Right. Now, this isn't what, like that weatherman said, a mirage, because I thought that was just, I thought those characteristics were just 
for the Great Lakes region. This is nowhere near the, gla- no, the Great Lakes. No, this is nowhere lakes. near the gla- Great Lakes. And I assure you it's not a mirage because mirage, I actually watched a, a Flat Earth debunking video the other day and they were talking about how the reason that you know that these pictures are doing this is because of mirages and atmospheric conditions, etc. This can be seen on just about any day unless it's like really, really cloudy where the clouds are low and it's just a horrible day where you can't see you know, a mile in front of you. You can see this anytime, right? It doesn't matter if it's hot or cold in New Orleans. This You'll get this deal. But what the guy was saying in the video was is like, that's why people show photos, but they don't show videos because if they did, what you would see is a building that's like, appears to be waving and moving with the air because oh, it's but a you mirage. Have a, I imported the video, so like, I guess yeah, we're going to no, get that right. in a second. So I, I took several pictures and I, I took a little clip of the video. There's a, another one. And um, yeah, let's, so here's the video. And Oops. there we go. I mean, there it is. You can see the waves are moving. So you're on a tripod on the beach. You're not moving around. This Correct. And this this is my phone filming what the camera was seeing. Y- you with me? Yeah. So that's why the, the camera was moving. Uh, the, the phone camera, you know, was moving. But yeah, I was on a tripod 18 inches above sea level, looking straight that direction, and boom, there it is. So where there should be 384 feet of curvature, you know, I got about a, uh, maybe about a, I'd say 80, 90 feet of the bottom of the building is blocked. That's now, let it. me, let me ask a question. This, this, this uh, formula is a formula when you have a heliocentric model, just a completely round earth, correct? Spherical earth, right. Yeah, spherical earth. So it, Neil deGrasse Tyson himself and everybody in that realm of experts has said it is an oblate spheroid. So it's not exactly yep. anywhere close to what we think of as a sphere. Mm-hmm. So wouldn't that make this calculation, this formula, just Different. null and void? Why would like one? Like I always say, if you if you say it's an oblate spheroid, it's pear shaped, it's it's bulging, it's whatever at the center. Why are why are the globes still globes? Why is this yeah. this formula still a valid formula? This is lazy science at the very at the very least criminal. This is lazy yeah. science. Well, here's here's my point with the oblate spheroid. Let's just say, assume for a second that it is an oblate spheroid and ignore every picture of Earth we've ever seen. Because every picture of Earth we've ever seen represents it as a Because that's what you essentially say if you if it's mainstream media saying now it's an oblate spheroid, everything, that yeah. the whole house would come crumbling down. Yeah, I mean, it, would, it, would, it effectively, like I think we've said it on, pre, or I think I may have said this on another video, one of the two is wrong. Either the pictures that NASA has given us are BS or the oblate spheroid idea is BS. Because... The pictures from NASA don't show an oblate spheroid. They show a sphere. And if it is an oblate, if, if why would they make the claim that they're... Well, they're going to be wrong either way. Right, <laughs> the, right. The, they're the wrong either way. The formula's wrong but, but or the, the counter. Yeah, but for the formula's sake, let's assume for a second it's an oblate spheroid. Well, the problem you have is, is that this video here is from Louisiana... But there's people taking these videos and pictures in Australia and England and you know. It's Great not just Lake. Kansas where it's it's, it's famously yeah, flat. It's not one little yeah. area. This is everywhere. And the problem you would have is is like, let's say like you said, well, it's an oblate spheroid, and that area right there, that 25 miles, 24 miles, is a little bit flatter than the rest. Well, that means that to make up for it, to get us close, even close to a sphere, you would, the next 25 miles would have to have. Double the curve, mm-hmm. so you'd be able to. It all has see to. It. it all has to even out. It's got to even out. It's got to average out. So, even taking into consideration the oblate spheroid, I'd say that okay, for every time someone gets a shot like this, well, you should be able to raise a helicopter up, of, you know, a, a, a mile up, a plane a mile up, and you should be able to with the naked eye see that curve because it's so steep to make up for all those flat areas people have been filming. You see what I'm saying? I do. The <laughs> other people, they'll probably counter with something in the comments. But yeah. it, it's. And, and uh, I want to say one more thing about these photos. Sure. When people, the, the biggest argument I've seen against stuff like this is producing another photo that where, look, this much of the building is blocked and that's how much curve it should be or whatever. You can't debunk this photo with another photo. In other words, if I show you a picture of uh, a guy with three heads. Don't show me a picture of a guy with one head as proof that that's a that my photo's fake. 
Does that make sense? Understood. You yeah. need to explain to me the phenomenon that is going to cause me. That's what they use. There, there's some phenomenon that can't be proven right. to say, well, that's a, that's right. That's a, that's a, you know, the, the, the it's reflection of light. It's a mirage. It's, it's uh, the time of day. It's the fact that you were using but a no Nikon. Nikon's, Nikon's all it never shoot the curvature. That's right. <laughs> they always shoot it flat. That's right. That's, that's right. what it's, I mean. It's, well, it's I mean, if we're only one step away from that, from that reason. Yeah, you're right. You're right. But, <laughs> Point being is, is that you can't argue with, hey, go look at this video of the Toronto skyline where 300 feet are blocked and you can you can see the top half but not the bottom, and that shows the curvature. Don't show me a photo of supposed curvature to debunk my photo. All I need to see is one picture where curvature that should be there isn't, and you as science or as researchers need to explain why I'm seeing something I shouldn't, and you need to do, show me a, a, a demonstration that would prove your theory as to why I'm seeing it. Don't say atmospheric refraction. Don't say mirage. Show me how that's done. So this is the end of the video where you you leave it to people in the comments to prove yes. you're wrong. Okay, Correct. just checking. Yeah, All right, it. guys, have fun with it. I'm dropping the mic. <laughs>